Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this week we're going to do another short Studio One tip. I want to show you how to export stem files from your Studio One session and talk to you a little bit about what is a stem file. Some people are confused about what is a stem file and they confuse it with audio files and such. I want to explain what stem files are, show you how to export them from Studio One so you can take those stem files and you can import them into another DAW or send those audio files out to another engineer for them to do your mixing work. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing and also hit the notification bell so you know when I'm posting new content. Also, if you are a Studio One user, and you must be if you're watching this video, I want you to go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and check out my very uh, Studio One specific training courses. I have training courses and everything from mixing to recording and also a pre Studio One beginner's guide. Check out the images on the screen. Links will be in the description box below. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to give you a discount on these courses if you want to check them out. So stick around. So here we are in Studio One. What's a stem file? There's some confusion around this and I hear this thrown around the internet all the time and on YouTube where people say, I want to export and send my stems over to my engineer. And what they really mean is they want to send their singular tracks. And you may say, what do you mean? So here we are, we have a session here where we have 13 audio tracks. And let's say you've recorded these audio tracks and now you want to export them so you can send them off to someone to have them mix, someone like good old Uncle Dave here. Well, how do you do that? How do you export these individual tracks as single files? Some people will say that's called exporting stems. That's not what a stem file is. So let me explain. So when you have a singular audio track here, like a kick track, a snare track, toms and overheads, those are just audio files. Sometimes people will call them the multi-tracks from the session, all your different individual files. And if you want to export each one of these individual files as a separate file, so they sit in a folder so you can send them off to your mixing engineer, you want to export the audio files. A lot of people call that stems. That is not a stem. What a stem file is, is where you take a grouping of these audio files and you route it down to, let's say, a bus and you export that bus file, that would be considered a stem. Let me explain. So, for example, we have down here in brown a drum kit, small drum kit, kick, snare, toms, and overheads. Those four tracks are being routed down to a drum bus here. You can see that here, which is over here on the right-hand side of my console, okay? This drum bus is the, is the, is the, um, is the overall volume control and the overall level control, if you will, of the mix of these four drum tracks. So you blend these four drum tracks to get the nice balance between those four tracks and you route that down to a drum bus. And now that drum bus, you can control the overall volume of the drum kit with one fader. When you export this drum bus, that is called a stem, okay? It's the, it's the sum of the individual drums going down to a stem or a bus. Let me show you how to do that now. So if you come up here to Song in Studio One and we go to Export Stems, it's the fourth choice down, or you can do Shift-Command-E, you're gonna get a dialog box here. It looks very similar to Export Mix Down when you're mixing or exporting your entire mix. Over here on the right hand, or excuse me, the left hand side, we have our sources. We have two columns here. We have our channels and our tracks. Our channels represent every single track or our channel that we have in our console in, in our edit screen. So you can see all our individual audio tracks right here, right? And then we also see our drum bus, our bass bus, our guitar bus, our keyboard bus, and our vocal bus. That is considered a channel. Each one of these is considered a channel, okay? Conversely, if you come over to the tracks, all you're going to see are the audio tracks. You're not going to see any of the buses. So if you want to just export your audio files, your single tracks, so you can send those WAV files or MP3s to have somebody else mix your project in a different DAW or even in the same DAW, you would choose the track section. And then you can select or deselect which tracks you want to send, but typically you would send all of them most times. If you want to export not only the um, the individual tracks, but you also want to in send the bus channels. In this case, where the stem files, you can do that here under channels, and you can even deselect all your audio tracks, and you can just send the stem files. Now, when you export the stem file, or in this case, the drum bus, the stem file, that's going to be a stereo file of the blend of your 
tracks that are going to the drum bus. Does that make sense? So make sure you don't confuse the two. Many people confuse the two. They think that the individual channels are actually called stems. They are not called stems. They are called audio files or the raw audio files or the raw multi-tracks, but they are not stems. Stems would be your buses or your grouping of single tracks going to an aux, in our case, into a bus. So I typically, when I'm exporting audio files, I will deselect the stems unless they're specifically asked for and I would just send the audio files or I'd come over here to tracks and just make sure those are checked. Now over here in the center, you can choose where you want it to be sent to. Typically I would put it on my desktop in a separate folder. You can have a prefix for each one of the files. So for example, you can have in this case, the name of the song and the name of the band will be the prefix. So in this case, it would say Angels and Amplifiers, I'm All Right, the name of the song, then it'll give it Kick. Angels and Amplifiers, I'm All Right, Snare. Angels and Amplifiers, I'm All Right, Toms. So when they export, they'll have a long file name. A lot of times I like to abbreviate that. I don't ne normally need the whole band name. Normally I would just do maybe the song title, but you can do whatever you want. I'm all right, and then it'll be kick, I'm all right, snare, so on and so forth. Then you can come down to your format. You can choose how you want to export it. Typically, when you're going to export files and send them off to be mixed, you're usually going to use a WAV file. Usually, it's going to be at least 24-bit or 32-bit float, depending on the session itself. And I typically will send it at 48K, unless someone wants something to specific. Uh, some engineers will want you to do it at a higher resolution or a sample rate. That's all something that you can work out, but you could choose that here. And then the last thing you want to make sure that you do is over here where it says export range, you want to do it between, if you want the entire song, you want to do it between the start and the end marker. And you want to make sure that your start and your end markers are at the beginning and the end of the song and it will export everything. Or if you were just going to export a certain section of the song, you can do it between each markers or you can do different selections. There's a bunch of different choices here. I typically will do between start and end marker. That's just the way I like to work. And then over here, your options, you wanna preserve the mono tracks if they're mono, yes. You can use real-time processing if you like. I don't typically do that. Um, you can write tempo to audio files. Now you wanna be careful about that, that if, you're, if your session tempo is not set to the correct tempo of the song, in other words, if you've imported these and you didn't use the tempo, you see, it's standard is 120, but let's say when you imported these audio files, they were at 90. They'll stay at 90. So that means you don't want to write tempo to the audio files because in this case, it would stretch it to 120 and it would sound like the chipmunks. <laughs> we don't want that. Okay, you can import them to a track if you'd like. You can close the dialogue screen after export. There's a bunch of different things here you can check out. Um, and you can check out my beginner's guide where I go through this in a little more detail. Once you've done that, hit OK. And now you're gonna see down here, it's gonna export my files, WAV files based on where I told it to save on my system. And then you can take that folder and you can send it off to your engineer via Dropbox or Google Drive or however you wanna do it. And then they'll have the audio files at the format that you selected and they'll only have the audio files, in our case, not the stems because we didn't export that. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel that. So just realize that when you're talking about single tracks, we're talking about audio files. When we're talking about a bus or an aux where we've routed things down to an aux or a bus track, that is considered the stem. Okay, so if you weren't sure of the difference between the two, that is the proper terminology for these things and that's how you export stems out of Studio One. It's really, really easy. And how you export audio files. So I hope you found this video helpful. Nice Studio One tip for you. And now again, like I said at the beginning of the video, I wanna give you a discount on some of my Studio One training. So the first thing you gotta do is go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, right? Images will come up on the screen. Links will be in the description box. Go out to the website, check out the Studio One courses. And if you wanna take one of those courses, I wanna give you a 25% discount. You're gonna use the coupon code YouTube25. That's YouTube 25, you put that in at checkout, it will take 25% off, not only the Studio One courses, but really any course on my website. And just so you know, 
all the other courses on my website that are more generic mixing, mastering, EQ, compression courses, even though they will apply to any DAW, they were all done in, ver in Studio One and as of the recording of this video, Studio One version five. So you can, any course you take on my website, your screen and my screen will look the same. So check out all those courses, use the coupon code for anything on the website. And until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Take care everybody.